Stop all County Live. Happy Thursday evening, Dicko. It's podcast Thursdays. Matty, good evening. It's our favourite time of the week, isn't it? Do you know what it is, mate? I do look forward to it. I do look forward to it getting um we're getting more and more big names involved and yeah, I haven't really enjoyed it, pal. Just get to just see your face again every Thursday, Matt, and that beautiful face. If I don't see Matty on my laptop, I see him on my, on my TV screen these days, mate. <laughs> mate, mate, mate oh, yeah. What? Where did Where did we see you this week, mate? Bristol Motors. Bristol Street Motors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, I, I, I know him. I know, I know him. That's my name. <laughs> I just him. Play a little bit. I had to fire my wardrobe assistant last week. Not having that. Yeah, to what? Like, like camouflage, like camouflage shirt you had on. <laughs> my tablecloth shirt. I had to fire the wall. Yeah, you got in your head, mate. I don't let anyone get in my head. Go, just go black. You can't go wrong with black. Once you go black, you do work there. Going black. Anyway, I thought um, you were smart, Chris. Thank you, mate. I think, hey, I think you're looking brilliant as well. Um, listen, you talk about big names. We've got, we, we've got you. You called him before he came on air. You called him the Fox in the Box tonight. But the the. the one of the most prolific, if not the most prolific goal scorer I've ever had the um, the the thingy to share the pitch with, the uh, the, the chance to share the p- a pitch with, and what a career he's had. Yeah, and and then some. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Let's just, let's just let's just jump straight in. Let's bring him to the show, Adam Lafondre. Yes, mate. Adam. How are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good, mate. Cheers for that nice little intro there, Dicko. Anytime, mate. I, I, all written down. Everything had crumbled, though. Started stuttering. Got a bit nervous, mate. Hey, do you know what it is, mate? Got, got a bit of stage fright, didn't I? Starstruck. Nah. That's not you, mate. That's not you. M- Mumbai's finest. <laughs> <laughs> so, how was yeah. how tricks over there? How have you uh, adapted to eating curry for breakfast, lunch and dinner? Uh... Yeah, it's good, mate. Not maybe not lunch and dinner, um, just a break. Yeah, <laughs> after I had, I had curry for the first probably three or four days, you know, just trying a little bit of the the local food and stuff, and never again, mate. I was literally on the toilet <laughs> an hour later every time. Yeah, I can think of worse things to be to adapt to. Jeez, that sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. No, mate. No, it's thirty-five degrees, no enough every day, and you you're sweating when you're trying to like even just smelling the food. You're sweating, so. <laughs> and, you know, basic food. I have just like pasta or whatever they put on a bit more, um, a bit more of my cuisine on. You know, get what meals. Are you, up. Where are you staying, Alfie? You in like a hotel or have you got a house or a flat? Yeah, I'm in a hotel in Goa. The whole league is in Goa. Um, we're all in like individual hotels. Uh, to be fair, the, the leagues have been ran great because you know, obviously, everyone's got uh, you know the troubles with COVID and stuff like that, and we've not had one hiccup with anything like that. Uh, I get tested every three days, so you can imagine sticking big sticks up my snoz every oh, three days. What? what do they use? Like, um, like a really a loud boat for that one? Use yeah, a boat on. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I wake up at one o'clock in the afternoon, mate, and they're shoving things up my schnoz, mate. I'm like, ah. Jesus Christ, mate, it disappears, doesn't it? Yeah, mate. How did it so, 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 talk to me? Tell me, how did it all come about this, this, uh, this move? Um, well, obviously, I was in Australia. Um, had two great seasons there. Didn't really want to leave there, but obviously, when COVID hit over there, it changed their league massively, and you know, financially impacted myself and all the clubs. Um, and the <laughs> club couldn't give me, you know, sort of reassurances where the league was going. So they worked in with uh, the city group to to sort this this loan deal out to to Mumbai and. Um, it was pretty. It was pretty straightforward, really. Once I, you know, agreed to it, it was you know it was done. I, I could come home, spend six, seven weeks at home, uh, get the family sorted, and then I sort of flew out, and and that was that. I'm I'm out here, um, obviously doing the rest, and I'm 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 hopefully back in maybe two and a half weeks. So I should be back home in back two and a half in weeks. Australia or back over in England or back in England, back in England. Yeah, the family's in England, so also we're back, in England. back over here now. Yeah, yeah, she's back in the house we were in. Um, prior to Australia, um, so I'm um, looking forward just to you know getting a bit of normal life, going back and seeing the kids and stuff. You, will you be going back to Australia in the in the future, or I don't know. My contract runs out here. Uh, like Mumbai took over my contract from Sydney, and and it runs out in May. So I've not really planned anything beyond that. I'm sort of 
waiting and seeing, you know, and probably in the next month or so what I do future wise. I've already had a few interesting calls from people, you know, seeing what I'm doing, you know, from, from the end of March really to see out the season. But I don't think it's possible for me to play for another team this season. So um, I don't well, know. Maybe I, I play for a vet team uh, in Farmworth. So, you know, I, I, I can't guarantee you anything, but I might be able to get some minutes under your belt in um, uh, May, June, if if need be. In net or outfield, though? Oh, in net, mate. You're not good enough to play out. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> Failing that, mate, we've got a power league team. Just, just coming out. <laughs> Are we were reigning champs at Stockport. We had to give the title back when we left. So, what's the, just before we go into our, like, previous days with county and everything else just what's the what's the crack with the city group they so they've got a, a club in india a club in australia one in america maybe two in america if i'm not mistaken and they're just kind of taking over yeah they've got they buy stakes in all the clubs obviously <laughs> you know try and uh build the the infrastructure and, and stuff yeah they like to say there's one in in melbourne in australia there's one here the mumbai one obviously which i'm playing for it's just there's just one in america i think new york city yeah. And then these, I think they've got one in Bolivia, one in Belgium, France. So, like you say, they're the sort of global domination by taking a club in, you know, in each country. I think you should see how many of them you can get, you can play for. So you can play with <laughs> I've got enough legs left for that. There's <laughs> about 13, 14 clubs. I've only played for 13 or something. <laughs> Alfred, can you can you can you compare the standard? Can you sort of give us an insight into the, the state of what you used to over here? Oh. To be oh, fair, like the style of football, Australia, Australia's more comparable to England than than India. I think India's still developing. There's still a lot of work to go on with infrastructure and academies and stuff like that before they bear the fruits of you know real top players. But there is some good young Indians here who need a bit of polishing and, and stuff like that. There is it, it's quite hard to judge because I think there's sort of a, a new school of Indian players coming through now who. Who have got a lot more technical ability and um, you know a lot a lot faster, but a lot of them struggle with you know the physicality of the game and they, they tend to be quite slight and yeah. um, easily you know maneuvered off the ball and stuff like that. And they're probably a little bit away behind in that sort of you know football essence. Can we expect a rise then in the next say ten years of Indian football? You know the standard shooting through the roof. I I, I would expect so. Yeah, I think the next five to ten years will be, will be crucial over here. Is, I think um, Red Bull are invested over here. I think maybe Russia Dortmund have got ties over here. Rangers have got ties over here. The City Group are involved. So if obviously they get involved with the academy systems here, the the, the population here, you know, it sort yeah. of spreads. Like it's going to re- improve everything. And, you know, obviously if you keep on the same programme with, with the right coaching and stuff like that, you're obviously going to see an improvement. So definitely, I think, five to ten years' time then. India, I'm not going to say they're going to win the World Cup or anything, but I think there'll, there'll be a lot of a, a big improvement. Of what, what about in um, in Australia? Just to jump on Matty's point there, I mean, <clears throat> I guess it's probably a bit too simplistic to say League One level, League Two level. Like that, uh, that's the sort of question I got asked when I went there. It's like, where did I see it sitting? It was quite hard because. It, Across the teams and across the league, the the standard varies. When I went to Sydney, they were sort of a mixture of a championship team and a League One team, whereas the other teams, there was maybe four of them sort of teams and we were the best of them. And then there was probably League One, then there's like League Two teams as well, sort of mixed in that way. You've got the bigger teams tend to have 10, 12 like good players who you know, know the game and really know and some good youngsters around that. And then... It goes to like eight good players, six good players, four good players, etc. So, you know, it's sort of diluted from that, really. It just goes to show throughout the world, you look at the leagues throughout the world, like you say, there's probably two or three, four maybe good, like big teams in Australia. You've got Italian league of maybe three or four top teams. The Premier League, you know, you, they find it out now, like seven or eight teams. And it's, it's, it just shows how good the standard is in England. I think when you've got managers like Carlo Ancelotti and Jose Mourinho, not even in the top four, it yeah. just shows how strong it is. You know, it's yeah, it's frightening. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah, it helps obviously with the you know the financial. You can put them on recruitment as well. If you can buy the best players over here, then you're obviously going to have the best products on the pitch. You know, you you recruit the best managers. 
recruit the best players, it kills everyone else. There's not, you know, apart from, you know, Messi coming to, to England, which is maybe on the cards with City. Um, who else left in world football? You know, everyone's talking about Mbappe. Mm. He's, the, the main rumours for him is England because we've got the money over here to, yeah. to pay the figures for him. Haaland as well, you know. I think obviously the, the top players in the world all want to come play in England because they know they'll get the money that that they won't get elsewhere. You know, Real Madrid are in financial trouble. Barca are in financial trouble. You know, the... the COVID. What you do, what, what, why don't you just give them a little borrow? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, Royal Bank of Alejandro. Hey, I needed to come through 10 years later, mate. It's way too hard to be in the game now. So I think, like, it, I think it consolidates a player's career as well, you know, at the top level. Yeah. I think if they can do it in England... Uh, yeah, how difficult definitely. our Premier League is. It, it, it tops it off, really. I think that's the big question mark around your Mbappes and your, your sort of messes and that. If they can come here and do it, because a lot of them move over there, you know, like you say, for the money and the status, and generally find it probably a fraction easier. It's not yeah, physical, definitely. you know, but the, bring, uh, the physicality of the league is, yeah. is and, and the improvement in the Premier League year on year. You know, with 100 mil every season, if you stay up in the league, you go from having two or three good players who are Premiership elite to having five or six when you buy three more, three more in the summer. So your team always improves, and you, you get a Leicester, you get obviously, you know, Tottenham dropping out of the pack now when they've got a superstar squad. When you know people are looking at it like, what the hell's going on there? Yeah. yeah. So just just finally on the City thing then, because you play for the City group, do you do you hear things about Messi going to City? Does, does the, the rumor slip around? No, 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 nothing like that. It's just <laughs> sort of seeing the sort of the common knowledge in it of. Yeah, it's yeah. not who can afford Messi. It's maybe City and there's maybe PSG. Yeah. Um, and you sort of got to go with that, really. Pep's at City, so if he is going to leave, you know, you sort of, sort of think he would go to Pep and yeah. you know, sort of give it a go yeah. in England, maybe, and, and give away the doubters. So moving moving things on then to, to Stockport County, I mean, the last, what, 12, 18 months at County has, has been massive. How much have you seen of what's been going on? Yeah, I've, I've seen obviously the, they've had a big takeover by a guy who's got a lot of money. I've seen that. Um, a few of my mates that joined the club. Um, JJ's there. Um, sp- I spoke to him recently. Obviously, um, I know Sars is good mates there, Captain Hogan. And obviously, they've got some really good players that they've bought as well. You know, obviously, they bought Rooney in as well, didn't they? I think uh, yeah. John Rooney. Um, I think they've got a lad who used to play with Ricard. If well, is it Southern Hales or Early South and Hales? Yeah, we had him on two, yeah. weeks, ago, two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, I played with him at Cardiff when he and he was a really good young player then. So, you know, I know the the squad's really good and the the fighting for promotion realistically with, you know, the, the, the sort of status the club is, it shouldn't really be in you know the conference or even in non-league football. But you, you don't really get you know the given right to. Demand league football just by the states of your club. Of course, yeah, of course. What um, what what are the first memories that come out for you when people ask you about county? A really <laughs> good one. Oh, they give me my start in football, even uh, at, you know eight years old. I think it was when I first joined Stockport um, at the Centre of Excellence. I think it was Trevor Porteous who yeah. recognised me at um, like a you know like a soccer academy camp. Alan Armstrong was a who was like my favourite player at the time for County, um, and he was the one handing out the trophies and stuff. And I think I won like player of the tournament there or whatever. And he was handing me the trophy and stuff. And then Trevor Porter said, "Oh, we we need to get you at Centre of Excellence at Stockport and stuff." And you know, it sort of went from there really. And you know, I grew up in the academy, well, not the academy, the Centre of Excellence really, and into the first team. What was it like playing with these guys? I didn't really play with Matty that much. I played more I with Dicko. I didn't yeah. play with you, yeah. You were the kind you I think you just left, hadn't you? When, when Matty was... I think you left yeah. the season when, when Matty came in. You'd obviously gone to Rochdale. Yeah. Um, uh, it was it was frustrating. It was quite frustrating because when I when I both kind of got my contract and, you know, signed my professional contract and had a, had a fantastic first six months at, at County, scored seven goals in the first... in, in the second... Like, you know, the past... the last part of the season... And helped to stay up, and I remember, I remember that my first, my first ever memory of Alfie. Um, I'd, I'd been trying to train in pitch, and I'd only been there for a week or so, or two, and he was coming back from injury at the time. Yeah. And he was stood there, and he was just doing this little thing where I'd get the ball, do a step over, put it on his right, whip it in top bin, 
And he'd do a stem on his left, whip it in top bin. I was looking at his car, I was thinking, who's he? <laughs> it, who's that? And he yeah. used to be crap, mate. Honestly, like, like, literally, he'd, he'd get. I don't know if you, you, you sure you remember? We'd get the yeah. the goals. He'd wheel, he'd wheel the goal into into the to the normal position. Then he would, would have another goal, and he'd wheel that in front, and he'd just practice for about an hour for he kicks, just getting it over that first net into the net. And if he got if he got one or two out of out of fifty, he was buzzing because like he'd just practice and practice and practice. And he, I, that's that was my first memory of uh, of you of you when I, when I first signed for County, just whipping free kicks in. <laughs> yeah, I, I did my ankle. Yeah, I, I remember a stupid tackle from behind in youth team training. Someone smashed me and ended up landing on my ankle, and I was done for like eight weeks. And then when I come back, I started playing a little bit, and then I did my ankle again, and then I come back again. And I think that's when you come in after yeah. I'd done it second time and and we were like sort of used then at the back end of that season as like me and you would sort of use as like crisis we'd like break yeah. break the pass if, need, if required yeah and we sort of seemed to nick late goals all the time like yeah well we had kind of obviously I think it was it, it helped that obviously the age thing obviously I think I was yeah. 19 you were what 17 maybe yeah. 17, 17 18 yeah, and 17. and we had the likes of Damien Allen and yeah. we were the younger lads because because that when I first signed for County, we had a um, more of a more of a senior squad like yeah. Adam Shaw, Harple Singh, um, you know, you had Briggs here, Rob Clare, who played at good levels or a bit older, and then you had me, you, Damo, you know, the Jamie K, the younger yeah. lads who were like just just kids really, just trying to break in, trying, trying to trying to make a make a career for ourselves. Uh, so we, we were quite close, and remember the the away games, and we used to be in the room playing FIFA, playing FIFA, playing Pro Evo or FIFA, whatever. And, mate, I swear to God, he, he must have had some sort of cheat because I could never beat him. <laughs> <laughs> the joke. The game Pro Evo, game, mate. What, Pro it? Evo, Pro Evo. It was not so absolute. Just drugs or, or real, whatever, mate. I remember that game, number nine instead of the like Ronaldo or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's got number number nine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Shimamaldo or something like that. Or <laughs> Dod Dodgy badges for the yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Roberto Carlos was called Roberto Larcos. I remember yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you clearly have the right to be? No, no, not. <laughs> I think it was that, that first full season or my second, my 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 second season, which was my first full season. I think it was quite frustrating for the likes of me and you because. We'd, we'd been used, like you say, as like a you know a get out of jail thing in the in the end of the the, the the season when we stayed up and we'd scored goals and we went to the, to a point where we weren't really getting a game. Um, and it was frustrating, and, and at one point I nearly went out on loan with Damo to uh, Royal Antwerp. Yeah, um, wow. me and Damo flew over to Royal Antwerp, um, and Damo ended up signing from what was it? Was he the reserve reserve team manager? Yeah, it was, jo it was Warren Joyce who was at United. He came yeah. in and. Did coaching at uh, county at the time and then yeah i think obviously the nod over there and took uh dame over there and a few united lads went there as well didn't they it was there with that um member dong was it dong yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. and he absolutely yeah. was absolutely no because he did i think he made about three three appearances for united yeah uh, i think commercial stunt weren't it i think yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah but um it was quite frustrating that season i think you you were in the same boat as me where you you know you we were training well. We were, we, we we were doing everything right, but we just couldn't get that 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 chance. Yeah, definitely. I, I, for me, that felt like the season I was going to kick on. Like I, the season when we stayed up, I got, I scored like eight goals. I think I got Young Player of the Year, and then I thought, right, it's my time to kick on now and kick on next season. You know, we had a good partnership as well when we played together. So I thought he's going to trust me and you. Yeah, and then come the next season didn't really start like that. I, I think I started maybe the first couple of games. I think Glenn Murray got brought in then and I was playing up top with him. Yeah. For a couple and I always remember we did one meeting. I can't I can't remember who we played. We might have got beat 2-1 or something or 2-2 or... All. <laughs> and Jim's gone, why are you in the team, Alfie? And I've turned around and gone, goals, obviously. <laughs> He's like, you had scored in four games. I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, God. <laughs> Yes, Gaffer. Do you um do you remember a beefer? Yeah, mate. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what how did you forget about this? What about when I was sleeping in the room 
and all the lads sneaked in my room and put all mine and Damo's clothes on and went for dinner in it. I, I had Tess in my brand new Versace top and Ash Williams in my gear, mate. I don't remember that. I think I was yeah. still out. Mate, my head was gone. I come down for dinner. Ash, Ash is wearing my top. Tess is in my top. I was like, hold on. Looks like my clobbery. <laughs> Gone to the room, watching the wardrobe, nothing in the wardrobe. Came, I was like, what did you do? I was like, what? I had a sleep, lad. What am I meant to do? I don't know they're going to come in and break in while I'm sleeping. <laughs> well, we had, um, I'd, uh, I'd, had a, I'd, met, I'd gone out and we stayed out later than I should have done. And I think at the time, me and Alfie both wanted the number 10 shirt. Yeah, uh, yeah. I got the number 10 shirt and, oh, man. And in a beef, and Gannon wasn't happy, mate. He wasn't wasn't happy that I'd been out, stayed out until about one in the morning. So he threatened, you know, you're not having the number ten shirt. He started yeah. out. We, we played the pre, we played the game over in a beefer. I think I don't was it you got injured in the game. Someone nah. someone got injured, and I came on and scored two. I was like, fucking yeah. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and then we played um, we played we played Car- Carlisle were over there at the time, weren't they? It was us, Carlisle, yeah. and the other teams. Yeah. Like a local we, team over there as well. Remember that? Like, we played a local team, didn't they? And, and he, he volleyed, yeah. the, the, the guy he kicked off, and the I think I think someone had scored. It might have been out. Might have been you. Someone had scored, and the um, the rep, it was like it might have been offside, and the line didn't give it. So their player, their defender, ran over, punched the ref, the liner, and kicked him in the face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> remember that our, right. our club yeah. doctor had to run over. And pull his yeah. tongue out so he didn't swallow his tongue. He was, he was unconscious. Yeah, I remember, man. Can't do that. The game, the game got Can't abandoned. It's illegal, yeah. that. <laughs> you know, that I would do that. He's frowned yeah. upon. Like he's definitely <laughs> pushed him there. He's frowned upon. Yeah, I think he's got a year for the rest. So what, what was you... Um, obviously, being at, being at County since, obviously, eight years old, how did you find the first move? Um, To be fair, when I went on loan to Rochdale, like... I didn't really want to go at first, but I wanted to play because I, I came back from my ankle injury and I weren't playing. Eldo was playing at the time. You, everyone was doing really well. So, you know, obviously I understood it. So I thought, you know what I mean? I've got one player. Like, I, I think I scored like six or seven goals already that season, but I couldn't get back in the team. So I went to Rochdale with uh, Hilly and Flickers. And to be fair, they buzzed off me like, so like it really, you know, spurred me back on and, and sort of got me on the right track. And then I think County went, went on that mad run where they didn't concede for, was it like nine games? Nine games, what? yeah. And, and what happened was Jim rang me. I did a, I did a, a program saying like, yeah, um, I spoke to the gaffer at Stockport. He's really happy how I'm doing. You know, he's looking and stuff. I'm so happy how they're doing, etc. And in the program, it said Jim Gannon instead of gaffer. So he rang me up and said, I'm your gaffer, not Jim Gannon. I was like, what What do you mean? He was like, in the interview, you, it says Jim Gannon. I said, no, I said Gaffer, they've just put that though. And he was like, no, no. Well, I'm your Gaffer, just so you know, and you're coming back soon anyway. And I was like, why do you need me? And I was like, and he was like, yeah, yeah, we do. And like, obviously, you you won nine in a row. And I was thinking like, I'm, I'm on flames here at Rochdale. Like, just leave me here. I'm having a bit of fun. Like, yeah. I won't mind. Being here for a bit well, you're playing, you're enjoying your football. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then I come back because who do who do um, who do we get beat by, or who do breaks the run? Um, I want to say Bristol. Yeah, was it? No, nah, because I played in that Bristol Rovers. I played in that one. Was that the, play- away, the away game when Ricky Lambert scored a hat trick? Was it Ricky Lambert scored a hat trick? Ah, it weren't that one. Because we played Hartlepool and I came back and my first game back, we played three up front against Hartlepool, me, you and Eldo. And we all scored. I set up one and got a scored a pen. Yeah, I remember. I remember. And I got hooked at half time with Drew free all. And then I yeah, played on yeah. and then I played on Tuesday night at I think Bristol Row was away with Eldo. And then and then Jim rang me on the Wednesday and said, Look, um, you can go out and loan again if you want. So I went, Oh, okay. I'll go Rochdale again. Like, I've had loads of fun at Rochdale. Like, if I'm not going to play here, then I'll go and play at Rochdale. So I rang Hilly and said, because I think they wanted me to go Wrexham. But I was like, nah, I'll go Rochdale. Like, can I go there? And he was like, yeah, okay, yeah, no worries. You can go there. 
So obviously I've I've rang Gilly up, Illy sorted the loan move out. And then on the Thursday, on deadline day, I've got all my boots, said bye. And I just got on the 60th at uh, Wivenshaw after leaving training. And obviously he rings me and says, ah, oh, no, the loan's cancelled now. You're coming back, someone's injured. So I've come back, come back, seen you, seen Tess, seen Proudy, Eldo. Well, who's injured? No one. What? <laughs> I've gone in to see the gaffer and he's like, oh yeah, testing training today so you can't go out on loan or something like that. And I was like, what? So in the, in the end, that season like killed me because like, I didn't play yeah. a bit. Well, he, did that to, he did that to me at one point the season before. Um, he'd, he'd asked me, he said to me, obviously, that, that the season we're talking about before about not being able to break into the team after after yeah. a first good six months. And... Um, he said to me, you can go out on loan to Rochdale. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to go upstairs. You can go out on loan to Rochdale. Um, so I was like, he said, go away, think about it. And then, you know, let us know what you think. So I said, all right, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go away and think about it. So went away for the weekend. I thought, you know what, I want to play, like you said. I want to play. I don't want to be sat here and not playing. It's frustrating. You know, yeah. I understand that the team's doing well or whatever. But I, I want to be playing. So I went back in on the Monday. I said, yeah, you know, I've got to think about it. And... Yeah, I'll go out on loan. And he said, well, um, well, well, you know, it, it's not an option now. You know, I've had to think about it myself and I want you to stay here. So yeah. I feel like a lot of the times it was, um, it was, you know, maybe a, a test kind of thing, if, if you will. Yeah. Maybe you want to be at the club or, you know, yeah. or it's, it's... You want to play for it, though, don't you? Yeah, you of course, yeah. Football. Yeah, and yeah. obviously stop being successful at that time. And if I weren't going to play after... I've Played so much at the start of that season. I started whatever, I can't remember it was, maybe 10 at the start of the season. And then played like 10 at Rochdale. And then my season just come to a, a, a halt straight, straight after that. So it was like I needed to move away. Like obviously after that, we had we had good strikers there as well. Like yeah. I, I wanted a first team striker in my own right. And I knew I weren't really going to get that. So yeah. That's I, I, what was it, that's what was it like playing against County in that playoff final? Was it a bit, did it, how did it feel? Weird shit because we lost. <laughs> yeah, but well, like weird. before that though, do you know like when you know it's going to be counting? <laughs> shit, shit because we lost. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's just weird, isn't it? It's just it's a weird feeling, you know. I was with all them boys the season that, you know, um, a majority of them, are, you know, grew up playing against like Pitbull yeah. and obviously I've been with Pilts for a while, Rowe, um, obviously Dicko. Do you know what I mean? Like all them boys, like I, I sort of played with them for a while anyway before that. So it was weird yeah. seeing them all there. But obviously they got, you know, it's the best thing we, winning at Wembley. But I don't know about it. I lose all the time there. <laughs> yeah, I know, mate. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what a fine to be alive. It was good. Do you know what? That was actually my next question, though. You know, how, how, how did it feel? Because obviously your family, you are from Stockport. You've grown up in Stockport. Your friends are there. You you would have had friends from Stockport the game, you know. Yeah. You know, Stockport County fans, but wanting you to do well as well. I mean, I had, I had a, 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 two coaches full from from Salford come down, who um, obviously me, me being a Salford lad and Callum Higginbotham being a Salford lad, you know, they, 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 were all, they all wanted us both to win. You know, they, they was they was cheering us both on. Um, it's kind of mixed emotions, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, really surreal. You know, like you say, like I, I've sort of, you know, grew up watching County as well. I, I was always at the County games because we'd get tickets as 15, 16 year old. So, you know, I was pretty much a County fan as well as, you know, obviously a Red. So um, it's hard to play against, you know, you club straight away. Um, <laughs> so it's, play about what he's on. Wrong, it's the wrong kit, that lad. It's snug, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was weird playing against Stockport, but you know it, it's football, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? I did it the, the season after. I went went with Rotherham to the player final, and Rochdale got promoted. So uh, no, it's, it's a it's a business outfit, isn't it? But the problem is, yeah. you're 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 sort of the 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 Ryan Giggs, if you like, of, of Stockport County. You know, come right through from being a baby. Yeah. It's all you've ever known. You're a Stockport lad, so it is a bit different for you in the sense. I'm not from Stockport. Dicko's not from Stockport. Yeah. You know, but it's a little bit what, different for you because you're, you're yeah, sort of hometown yeah. club. What um, what club or what part of your career would you say is the part where you really really took off? 
Um, it's hard. Shea Redding, Shea Redding, I think. Yeah, that, I think that put me more on the map, but I think obviously Rotherham. I was going to say, I reckon Rotherham. Round for that because obviously I don't get picked up by Reading if I don't score, you know, sixty goals in, yeah. you know, two seasons pretty much. So um, it was sort of like Rotherham leading into Reading, then Reading yeah. really gave me the the platform to excel on what I've done at Rotherham uh, and opened my eyes really to professional football from going from you know a, a League Two player and the League Two work ethic and. My belief on, on football at that, I found it easy in League Two, so I took it easy in League Two. And then when I got to the Championship, I realised, you know, this is where the battles happen and you've got to be stronger, you've got to be quicker, you've got to be mentally faster as well and you've got to be fitter. Yeah. And uh, it was it was a, a steep learning curve and I had to, you know, adapt quickly. Do you remember, um, do you remember me coming into uh, Rotherham? <laughs> I knew you were going to say this one. No, man, you're a bad man for that. So, are we allowed to say this on here or? Say whatever you want, mate. You've got yeah, free. I agree. Whatever you want. So, I, so, I came, so, I came to, um, I'd, I'd been, um, I'd, I'd finished at, um, was it at Barnsley? I'd left yeah. Barnsley. Um, and I was looking for a club. And he was the manager at the time. Andy Scott, I think it was. Andy Scott, it was, yeah. So, Andy Scott was a manager. He said, you know, yeah, my agent spoke to him. Yeah, come down. You know, we yeah, had really interested him as long as he's not injured. So I went down. I had, I had wear and tear in my ankle. I had a bone spur in my ankle, but I thought, right, I need to get through this session. He wanted me to go to Portugal. I think you were going to Portugal or somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come there for a week. And my agent was like, well, no, because if he gets injured, he's not insured. You know, you either want him or you don't. He said, so we agreed that I'd have a training session on the Monday, I think it was. And then on yeah. the Tuesday, I'd play against Chef Wednesday in a, in a, pre-season friendly so I had a training session Alfie was there who else was there um, J-Bo J-Bo was there J-Bo was there you had um, Popey big, Popey yeah big Popey was trying to get out of the club he hated it yeah. didn't he? he hated yeah. it um, yeah, no so so I had this training session did well in the training session got in the train changing rooms after the game after the training session got a message on my phone um, one, of, one of the lads who played for Paul Marshall Marsh is messaging me. Oh, I didn't know you was at Rotherham. I banged one of the young lads' mums in bed on. <laughs> I was like, what? What's that? So obviously j over oh, my shoulder. j over my shoulder. Oh, no. Who could this be? Reads it out in front of everyone. <laughs> so asking one person, is it you? Is it you? No, no. Next minute. I won't mention no names. But yeah. this young lad walks in the um, he walks in the uh, the change rooms. And if Jabal goes, is your mum been an order this, this summer? <laughs> yeah. Where's she been? <laughs> Benny Dom. <gasps> so. And Jabal as well. Like, Jabal. The loudest. Oh. What's that? Jabal don't talk normal. Hey, did your mum go Benedot? Like, you know, like, you know how Jabal talks. Oh, He's only got one okay. volume. Yeah, that's it. Just loud. Oh, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, Apparently, his family knew the man, or we were, were well in with the club, and it got and it, they didn't find it too. So, Jay was like, So, how long have your mum and dad been still open? He's like, They're not. Oh, my <laughs> good God. So, so, it was, um, that was the end of Dicko at Rotherham. Yeah, mate, that was a dressing room killer. But mate. We went to, um, I went to South End and we played, I think it was the first game of the season, we played Rotherham, um, and we beat us 1 0. Um, it had you had great look, Grabham was there at the time. Yeah, yeah, Grabs was there, yeah. yeah. I, left, I left that August. I left that August. I, you must have played him just after that. Must have been then, must have been. Because, um, yeah, Grabs was up front. Me and Grabs were up front there. Because they were saying to me, they were saying, no, no, we need to get Alfie out first before we can sign you. We need to get we need to get LaFondra out. You know, we, we need to sort a deal out for LaFondra. So I was like, yeah. hell up, Alfie. Get, get, get to Premier up. Let, let me be down here, lead to your peasant. Oh, they didn't let me go for a while. I think they, they rejected a few bids, but Rotherham did. I, I, think, I don't think proper bids came until late in the window anyway. So, What was it like in Cardiff? Um, good. I didn't, I didn't really... Um, I don't know, get the best out of myself there, really, I'd say. Um, like, obviously, Oli. You know, Oli signed me. Like, uh, it was a dream come true playing for him. Like, he was my hero as a kid. Yeah. But to, to sign for Oli Gunner, like... He ran, wait, he ran me up in my house in Reading and he was like, hi, Alfie. And I was like, literally melted, like a mo banter and melted. I was like, hi. <laughs> hi. 
Well, like a kid would. I was just like sat in the chair thinking, what am I doing? Like, I'm like 26, 27, grown up. Like, got kids upstairs and I can't talk to a, a guy on the phone. Like, he's like, yeah, really looking forward to you coming over. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just like a kid, mate. And then he got the boot, he got the boot after 10 games. So it's been hard for me after that. Like, Who came in after that? Slade. 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 So, so I was at Brighton with Slady. Yeah, he was all right. He's actually all right. Oh, like, he was, I feel like he was too nice to be a manager. He was just yeah, a really yeah. nice. Kid. Isn't like a, it wasn't a school teacher, wasn't he? He, he was, was a nice. Guy. Yeah, he was, he was a, a really nice guy. And yeah. me and me, I just just ban, I'm just banter all the time. Now we used to. He got he got he, he got involved. Obviously, the managers every now and then will get involved in the training session. Slady yeah. wasn't a footballer, mate. I don't think we're yeah. short numbers. It's not like Jim Gannon or you know. Ollie jumping in in a training session, you can actually, you know, do a bit. Yeah. Hey, Mil I was calling him Danny Mills because he's bald, didn't he? So I was, he was playing right back. So I was like, yeah, M Millsy, Diag, Millsy. No. <laughs> um, yeah, he was just really, do you know what? He was a really, really nice guy. And uh, he was, he was, he was, he was yeah. I think the trouble at, at Cardiff was he had a big, we had a big dress. We had like 35 pros, like established pros as well on good money. So he couldn't shift everyone. So yeah. he, he, could, he had to sort of sift through it all and fight with all other personalities and stuff like that. Why I think there was just someone in the background with the chairman and the CEO wanting to cut costs. I suppose um, when you've come from when you've come from like a lower team, like obviously he was at Brighton, weren't he? And, and yeah. was it late was it late in Orient before or after Cardiff? Yeah, yeah, I think it was before it. I think before. he did really well in Orient, then he got to the yeah. final. Yeah, so when you, but I feel like when you've when you've done that, and then I remember a story once, and it was like I think it was when um, when Moyes went to United, and he's trying to tell the likes of Rio Ferdinand who've won everything, they've won yeah. every, every domestic title, you know, the Champions League, and, he, and he's trying to tell them what to do, and it's like how how are they going to listen to someone who's not won anything? Do you know what I mean? And I yeah. feel like sometimes a, a, a big character like that could. Could come across like that, you know. Why are you telling me that? I don't agree with it, you know. And you yeah. had a lot of big names at, at Cardiff at the time, as well. Like you say you had a, a lot of big characters as well. Yeah, yeah, we, we had a lot of foreigners as well who didn't know how to play the championship. And I think the struggle was, was that they weren't in the squad a lot of the time, so I think they sort of formed I wouldn't say they were bad eggs, but they sort of formed like a group of themselves where they isolated themselves from the group quite a bit there was probably four or five of them who were who were good players in their own right but just not suited to play in the championship yeah like, I've, you know a lot of them didn't have the ingredients to play in the championship L little revolution <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I've, happens, I've, happens everywhere doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you know obviously they 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 couldn't get rid of them they were sort of still hanging about and i think it sort of didn't really suit any of the players there at the time and and we ended up I think that season, I, I ended up out alone, but that season they did okay. Like they, they had a, so many good players. You know, Pilks ended up there. They got Short Morrison there, who's the captain yeah. now. Jones was up front. So they had a lot of quality there. They had Fabio at left back. They had loads of quality. It was just, we couldn't find, you know, a winning consistent formula to get yeah. motion. And that's what you need. You know, you need a consistent formula. We couldn't find that. How did you find Bolton? Yeah, sick, mate. I loved it. Uh, you, that, you, had, you had a really good spell there, didn't you? Yeah, it felt like home, mate. It did really feel like home. Uh, you know, big club. Felt like I was meant to play for them. Just couldn't play for them long enough. Um, especially when I went there on loan. Like, I, I got rung up. I, I was in Piccolino's in Bramall. And I got rung up by Chris Powell, who was yeah. at Uddersfield at the time. And he was like, we want to take you on loan. We're interested. But he was like, pretty cool with it. And Blase, he was like, yeah, we'll take you on loan. We'll play you up front with Naki Wells. Like, I'd be really... Oh, you know, we're really excited for you to play, like sort of like that. Yeah. And then I spoke to Lennon, and Lennon was like, "You fucking what? I want you now. Get here, drive to Bolton now." And I was like buzzing, like what? He's like, "I've been trying to sign you to Celtic. Get to Bolton now. It's like Christmas has come early and all this." <laughs> so immediately, I had like that feel-good factor of like the what manager you, want, you wanted. Yeah. You wanted. Yeah. 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 Like, I could do nothing better than that. that. Yeah. Exactly. You know, as a striker, you thrive off a manager backing you like a hundred, yeah. no matter what you do. So you like know, you know could... you're in the side, don't you? For the first five games, at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, man, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Matt, Matt, Matt hit the nail on the head. I think it was last week when we had, when, when we did one, and he was saying, "Happy off the pitch, you know. That's when you that's when you're playing good football, and to be look, Cardiff's a long way from home, and yeah. am I right in, in saying that you used to travel quite a lot? Didn't you? Like you didn't stay down there. You used to drive up and down. Obviously, your dad yeah. used to drive up and down and stuff, and it was yeah, it's. That- that was one of my regrets, really, is not not really moving to, to Cardiff and, you know, get my family uh, fully settled in Cardiff. We moved, you know, in between Stockport and had a, a place in Cardiff on the training ground as well, which, you know, I was fully professional with, with what I did. But ultimately, I think that was probably hindered me in the, in the end because I was missing my family on days I stayed down there and stuff like that. I had a young family at the time who was, you know, my, yeah. my eldest, like five. I had a newborn. Um, Who's like six now? So you know how long that ago is. So <laughs> it's just hard to. It's hard for me to adjust. I thought it'd be easy to do that, but you know, when you're in that situation and you sort of get yourself in a rut and you're looking at things to blame, ultimately the, the blame is on me. I didn't perform well enough, my dad, but there's all mitigating circumstances to that. And you know, I would attribute one of them things to be. It that. is. It is difficult as a as a, 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 a sports person to to up and leave at the, you know, the drop of a hat, you know, it's not just, yeah. oh yeah, oh, he's, you look at him, he's going to sign for a new club, I bet he's getting X, 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 X amount. You're uprooting your family, your kids from school. It's, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's such a bigger picture than other than, oh, he's, he's, he's obviously getting more money by going there. You know, the, the, the fact you're leaving your friends, you, you're, or sometimes, like you say, with, with yourself, you're leaving your family behind and you, you, you're down there and you're missing them newborns. That was one of the reasons why, we had this last week again when Jim went to Peterborough and he turned the Peterborough job down because it's just too far. I've been in Scotland, I've missed out on my little one's um, you know, first year. You know, I don't want to miss out anymore. And it's it's big, it's big things like that that fans and people outside of, of football or other sports don't really understand. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I think how much it affects your mindset as a player as well, or as a coach, you know, obviously everyone has, you know, struggles in their own way and how they deal with them, but um, anyone will say if they're away from the family for a, a long period of time, then it's going to take you know its toll on them, yeah. unless they're you know in definite regular co- contact straight away. And um, you know, it, like I say, it's hard for me in, in my instance where I was away from them, and um, I didn't really want to go through that again. So that's why I, I opted to move away from from Cardiff. You know, pretty much soon as soon as I could um, from from the Bolton period, and that, and after that, I could have stayed at Cardiff. Um, in the following season, but I wanted to move away again because I knew I wasn't going to be happy if my family weren't there. Yeah. Just just last one from me. When County get back to back promotions this is their next season and they get yeah. Adam LaFondra on the phone. <laughs> Mate, I was gonna I was about to ask the same thing. I was about <laughs> can, to you, can you see um, along to your can you see a possible return in, in the future? Uh, anything's possible. I don't know. You never know, do you? Do you know what I mean? Until you have them conversations and I've not fully decided what I want to do, you know, football-wise, like I said. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I, what I want to do. I'm going to sit down in, I don't know, I'll get back in mid-March, so we'll sit down maybe April time, assess everything and um, and then I'll sort of see, you know, what the family want to do. I, I think for me, the next decision is a family decision. It's, family not, decision. it's not a selfish decision for me to go and, you know, take, take some money elsewhere. I don't... Um, I don't think it'll be one of them decisions. It'll be a, a full, you know, sit down. Uh, where do we all want to go? Or, you know, do we want to stay here? Do you know what I mean? And, and yeah. then I look for them, um, would stop well, in the equation then definitely, yeah, because obviously they're, they're at my local club and, um, you know, by all things that I've seen, they're, they're doing things the right way and, you know, they, they're at Carrington and stuff like that. So they've got the infrastructure to be, you know, a proper club. It'd be great, Alfie, wouldn't it, to start and finish there? Yeah, you know, you don't really get that opportunity to do that sort of thing. And, um, you know, if, if I did get that opportunity, it'd be great. And especially to help with some sort of success as well. You know, um, obviously, the only success I had was not scoring in the playoff final when you beat us. So, uh, <laughs> that's the only thing I did to help County re- realistically successful. It's well. overrated scoring at Wembley, mate. <laughs> I know, mate. Oh, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know, lad. <laughs> Agent of the we we're just we we're just saying we'll we'll start wrapping up in a minute. But we were just saying then you be forgiven for not remembering. It was many moons ago that we played at kid level. But I remember when you started playing for county. I remember seeing um, a headline on the back of one of the papers that said like Adam Lafondre, I want to be a Stockport County legend one day. And like like Matty says, you know, I think whether you come back or not, fans, 
you, you aren't going to find a Stockport County fan that doesn't speak highly of Adam LaFondre. Do you know what I mean? And who knows, maybe it could have gone a bit differently and we'd seen more minutes from him and stuff. But you definitely like that that homegrown hero, if you like, in Stockport. Yeah. I would have liked to have, have done more at Stockport, but you know, like I said before, we had a great group of strikers at that time, and you know, I wanted to forge myself on my own and and really establish myself on my own. And I knew uh, that weren't going to happen at Stockport. Fortunately, you know, that's how football works. You know, I don't begrudge anyone that. That was my decision, my personal yeah. decision to to go out there and you know go fighting on my own and and and, and try and do it that way. Um, you know, would have loved. And what a fight you've had, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, a few yeah, like, doing great though. 250, 250 career goals, mate. That's that's some achievement, pal. Some What's your favourite goal? Oh, uh, favourite goal or favourite goal is different because best technically goal or best goal for meaning because it's two different things because it could be a shit goal but it could mean a lot. If, but, if one goal... Pardon? Is, is, is the Bolton one keeping, it, keeping them up? Is that, that's got to be up there. That's one of them, yeah, definitely. I said I said it on Twitter the other day. I um, I scored two for Reading in a game against Southampton, and then the Bolton one against Forest. Like them two games for me. Uh, whenever like the only thing, if I only remember anything from my career, it'll be like them two occasions. You know, like the atmospheres and yeah, you know, like the fans and sort of thing. Like it's something that really I soaked in and uh, really appreciated. It was it was unbelievable. I want to I want to say it was against Wrexham. I might be wrong. Was we, there a bicycle yeah. kick? Bicycle kick in front of the Chiland. The left footer. Nah, the one against Barnet was better. The bicycle kick. The right footer. Was it Barnet. Yeah, but I scored a left-footed one against Wrexham. I know my goals, mate. Don't you worry about that. Checking them off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dicko, Dicko was saying last week one of the best things about time at County or anywhere, I guess, was um, the team bonding days and stuff. I'm guessing that you had some decent days there. Yeah, of course. We had a great group. We had quite a young group as you well. When we, went to, um, when we went paintballing? Yeah. Mental, yeah. mate. Oh, mate. Ashford, James Spencer is just an animal, mate. Yeah. He was just... I think he came with his, like, hunting gear on. Yeah, he loved that sort of thing. Yeah, he was, he was all over that. For two years at Rochdale, mate. He was my car mate at Rochdale for two years. Yeah. He was a yeah. funny car yeah. mate. And you had the likes of... We're talking about... We were talking about, obviously, players that people kind of forget about now and when I first got in there you remember Michael Wolski the unit <laughs> do you remember I would say do you remember when you could pick the um, so the weight the weight thing that you put the, 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 the triangle thing that you put all the weights yeah, on yeah. and you used to just do shrugs of it yeah mate I remember <laughs> when he got in he had like shaved his legs and he got like an ingrowing hair or something oh yeah he, was a, yeah, he had a big boil like a, like a big lump weren't it yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, big, remember big Ludo <laughs> I remember one time in pre-season with him we did like 400 and he was coming last by like a minute later than everyone. And then the last one, he smoked everyone by 30 seconds. Everyone was like, what are you doing? What was, the worst part, what was the worst part of being injured at Stockport County? Laps and steps. Was Laps and steps, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a year of it. Oh, yeah. Man. Oh, disgusting. I used to hate, I used to hate running with Roger. He used to make me feel horrible. Laps, laps and steps is probably the worst. That. The worst run I've ever done in my career. He was like so old, but he was so fit. Like all the time, he was just smoking road runs and that for no. He'd, he'd, right. You'd see him in the, in the in the gym with his top. He'd always have his top off doing yeah. doing whoops, doing ports of his top off. At about <laughs> kidding, about seventy five years old. Rumor yeah, has he's there now. Rumor has it he's there now. Surprised <laughs> me doing hundred hundred chin ups and two hundred dips or something in three minutes. <laughs> it's Friday morning. So when okay. he's not. Well, listen, Ads. It's been it's been class having you on, mate. It's been good seeing you again. And um, yeah, if you're back in Stockport mid March, who knows? Maybe next season. It's your round. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely yeah. your round. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Much appreciated, Alfie, mate. It's great to see you. Good to I see you, pal. Guys. All good the best for the rest of the season over there, mate. Yes, mate. Stay safe, guys. Take Stay care, safe, buddy. Man. See you back, yeah. pal. Right, mate. The fox in the box. The fox in the box. What a career, what a, career. What a player, and what, what a, what a tree that was. Cracker. Yeah, yeah. You, you, if you're listening, Gaffer, well, if you're listening, Gaffer, get get get, get your checkbook out. Adam Lafondre could be available. <laughs> Let me just put something out there. Adam Lafondre and Liam Dickinson signed 
I don't know, for one more season, one more ten game stint or something. I'll play centre half. <laughs> I've got to run now. I'm 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 not, if, you want, if, you want, if you want to get really daft, I'll come back as well. Just so, yeah. Yeah. Just what were you with your boxing gloves on. <laughs> I'll just park, park up in the middle of the park and spray it for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listen, gents, let, let's wrap it up. It's been um, it's been a good one, I think. Yeah, looking That's forward to many more. We've got, some, uh, we've got some big names coming up. Podcast so. Thursdays. We have to start yeah. doing this. Podcast Thursdays. PT. PT. <laughs> PT is in that personal trainer. No more. It's Podcast Thursdays. <laughs> Dicko, get the buds on. Yeah, listen, <laughs> lads, have a good evening. You too, guys. Take care. Cheers, gents.